Welcome to Encountering the Word, our weekly reflection on the Sunday Scriptures. God speaks to us through our own lives and experience, through the church, and importantly, through the words of Scripture. And so we gather to read and reflect on God's Word on this day of resurrection, what the Lord is saying to us here and now, and how best we can respond to what we hear. Let us pray as we gather to listen, reflect, and be together. Teach us to listen, O God, to those nearest to us, our family, our friends, and our co-workers. Teach us to listen, caring God, to those far from us, the whisper of the hopeless, the plea of the forgotten, the cry of the anguished. Teach us to listen, O God, our Mother, to ourselves. Help us to be less afraid and to trust the voice inside in the deepest part of ourselves. Teach us to listen, Holy Spirit, for your voice in busyness and in boredom, in certainty and in doubt, in noise and in silence. Teach us, Lord, to listen most especially to your words spoken to us through the scriptures. Teach us, dear Lord, to listen. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, You, son of man, I have made a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked man, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from his way, the wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked, to turn away from his way, and he does not turn away from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you will have saved your life. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, oh that, that today, today you would, would listen, listen to his voice, harden not, not your hearts. Come, let us ring out our joy to the Lord. Hail the rock who saves us. Let us come into his presence giving thanks. Let us hail him with a song of praise. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts. O oh, come, let us bow and bend low. Let us kneel before God who made us. For he is our God and we the people who belong to his pasture, the flock that is led by his hand. Oh, oh that, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not, not your hearts. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as on that day at Massa in the desert, when your forebears put me to the test, when they tried me, though they saw my work. Oh, that today, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves his neighbor has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in a sentence. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. 
God was in Christ reconciling himself to the world and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother or sister sins against you, go and tell them their fault, between you and them alone. If they listen to you, you have gained your brother or your sister. But if they do not listen, take one or two others along with you, that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If they refuse to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen even to the church, let them be to you as a Gentile or a tax collector. Truly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's readings cut to the very heart of the Christian life. They they deal with themes that are demanding. They are not for the faint-hearted. They challenge us in the most vulnerable part of ourselves, because they look at the relationship we have with ourselves, which has a direct bearing on the way we live in relationship with others. Let us take a look. First of all, I want to speak about the relationship with ourselves. You know, in preparing couples for marriage, there are two questions that I often ask them. The first one, what do you like about your partner? And they tell me something normally like, well, he or she makes me laugh. I often remind them that in six months' time, they may not be laughing anymore when things are done that they don't like. And the second question I ask them is, what do you like best about yourself? And they often struggle to answer this. And sometimes they say it's awkward because it feels so arrogant or boastful to answer that question. At the heart of Paul's letter to the Romans and Matthew's gospel today is the commandment of love of self and neighbor. Paul knows the difference between self-adoration and self-love. The love of God is expressed in a healthy relationship with ourselves. You cannot love another if you do not love yourself. You, You cannot give what you do not have. And so I wonder today if there's an invitation for us to ponder how we see ourselves, how many of the struggles that confront us are because we find it so hard to love the person we see when we look in the mirror. Fundamental to the love of neighbor and God is a healthy love of self. If we have a poor self-image, we will find relationships difficult to sustain because we need others to fill that self-love gap. The second thing is living out of God's love and forgiveness. That's a big theme, forgiveness. And it's linked to the first because if we cannot love ourselves, then we cannot live out of God's love. And a concrete sign of God's love is forgiveness. Ever said, I will never speak to that person again because something has happened between the two of you. That's an outward manifestation of our unwillingness to forgive. And Jesus today looks at the destructive side of our human nature. And he suggests something quite startling. If you're not willing to forgive, you cannot be part of the church. Go and join the tax collectors, he says. Forgiveness Jesus suggests is a process. It's not anything goes, because 
With forgiveness comes holding people to account for what they have done or failed to do. Forgiveness implies an ongoing conversation for both parties. The prophet Ezekiel tells us that we need to speak and keep silent so that unearthing the things we need to forgive or to be forgiven for is important. It seems to me a big challenge. The depth of our love and commitment to Jesus Christ, to Christian life, is the willingness we have to enter into the process of forgiveness. And then, of course, thirdly, there are obstacles to forgiveness and therefore obstacles to Christian living. What might be the obstacles we face to forgive another and therefore live the Christian life? The psalmist tells us hardness of heart. Or we are told in the gospel not willing to take responsibility. Or not willing to name that which needs forgiveness or forgiving. Ezekiel says, there may be a number of reasons we choose not to forgive. Past hurts that have not been healed, because healing is a constitutive part of forgiveness. Or anger, the inability to let go of my hurts which manifest in anger. Inability to love self. The hardness of heart which is born out of an arrogance that I know better. Today, we're being invited to seek a healthy relationship with ourselves so that we can truly live God's law of love and forgiveness. I want to invite you to pray today that you won't be afraid to confront the obstacles which prevent you from forgiving and therefore prevent you from living the fullness of Christian life. I want to invite you today not to be afraid to looking into your own vulnerable heart and those places perhaps in your heart where you feel there is a lack of love for self and therefore the inability to give to others. We're being invited to immerse ourselves today into the depths of Christian life. And that is revealed, Jesus suggests, fundamentally in our ability to forgive. Let's pray for that grace today. Let's pray together now as the Lord himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And let us pray. Loving God, you are always calling us to new life. Grace us through your word, the word that we have heard and pondered, to know you more clearly, to love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly each and every day. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. May Almighty God Bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us, friends, for encountering the Word. We look forward to being with you again next week.